you would think, would you not, that uh, the people running the MOIS, the people running this terrorist regime, uh, would perhaps uh, stop, at least for a while, uh, because they were caught. They were caught not just red-handed, but they were caught uh, with the intent to murder many, many people. Nope, that didn't uh, work. Um, so whether it's in Albania or Denmark, we see the same pattern. Uh, and it's not just a pattern, it's an institutionalized way of doing business. And the regime will continue to operate that way as long as the European capitals... European governments uh, tolerate that. So you just tried to uh, kill a bunch of people. Uh, we're going to sanction uh, part of your agency responsible for the, for the plan of the attack. I mean, it not, not only conveys a sense of weakness, but it makes the appeasement uh, very apparent to the adversary and is also an invitation. It's a green light to the adversary to continue to conduct business because, in effect, you're, uh, we would say in English, you're winking at your partner. You're saying, you know, don't do that. We won't tolerate it. And then on the other hand, we're, we're allowing it to happen. So the meeting in Warsaw is, uh, is very important. This is an um, incredibly relevant and sensitive moment for the European governments uh, not just to express their dissatisfaction, I mean, that's not the proper word, dissatisfaction, with a uh, regime that's trying to kill uh, people who are exercising their human rights and the hope that um, millions of people in uh, Iran, you see some of their pictures around the room, will someday uh, have the rights that we take for granted, the rights to have liberty and uh, the things that go... Uh, with being free. So I think the European capitals and governments have to change their position. They have to uh, strengthen the resolve uh, as well as the consequences uh, for Iran based on just what's happened in Europe in these three instances and many others that we probably don't know about. Our information shows that the terrorist activities conducted by the Iranian regimes are primarily done by the Quds Force, which is part of the IRGC, the Minister of Intelligence and Security, and collaborated by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So all three are engaged in these terrorist activities. Of course, the sphere that the Quds Force is uh, active is mainly in the Middle East, but MOIS remains the prime player in Europe and uh, terrorist activities in 2018, which has been marked by an increase in the number of uh, terrorist plots by the Iranian regime, they have all been conducted by the MIS. But our latest information from inside the regime related to the terrorist plot against the Iran gathering, Iran freedom gathering back in the 30th of June 2018 indicates that Reza Amiri Mokaddam, who is a deputy at the Ministry of Intelligence, was the mastermind of this terrorist plot. He traveled from Tehran to Vienna prior to the operation, met with Asadullah Asadi, the so-called Iranian regime's diplomat, head of the intelligence station of the regime in Vienna, and he coordinated the attack with Asadi, who is at the moment in jail in Belgium waiting for trial, and then returned to Iran. So you will see at the highest level, Reza Amiri Mogaddam was also the head of Iranian regime's delegation in the third round of their negotiation with the United States in Iraq back in 2008. So you will see a high-ranking officials of the MIS also working closely with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, heading diplomatic missions, and at the t same time being engaged directly in preparation and conducting of terrorist activities. The operation in uh, Paris, in the suburb of Paris, is a clear <coughs> example of the coordination of these different agencies in Iran, and the fact that the decisions 
are made at the highest level of the regime. While the MYS conducted the operation, the Minister of Foreign Affairs provided the logistics for the operation to be conducted. Having said that, I think it is time for Europe to take a firm stand vis-à-vis -vis the Mullah's regime, because all the officials of the regime in decision-making for these terrorist operations, they must be really sanctioned. They should not be interlocutors of the European countries, because neither they represent Iranian people, but in real fact, they are the same people who suppress the Iranian people at home and are engaged in terrorism outside Iran. It is very evident that uh, the Iranian regime and the, its highest officials are uh, responsible for what is happening. Now, the consideration that there is a, DNA, a, a terroristic DNA within uh, the Mullah's regime has been made time and again. But this is a message which has not been heard and is not considered enough by the highest European institution and also by the national governments of European member states. And that's why we are here today and why I believe there is an increasing relevance of the action that your organizations are undertaking in this particular field. Why is it risky to des activities that have been euh, reconnus, identifiés et nous allons le voir maintenant condamnés par l'ensemble des pays de l'Union européenne. Pour une raison extrêmement simple, parce que euh, l'Iran connaît une, évidemment une situation intérieure extrêmement difficile, à la fois sur le plan politique mais également euh, sur le plan économique, et que à chaque fois qu'un régime totalitaire a des difficultés, il en fait porter la responsabilité sur son opposition. Un rappel historique assez succinct de 40 années de terrorisme iranien. Parce qu'en fait, le problème, il est là. Le terrorisme iranien est une réalité depuis le début de la révolution islamique en, en Iran. Ça fait quatre décennies que l'Iran utilise le terrorisme comme un moyen légitime, évidemment le plus sacré possible, mais légitime de politique étrangère. Il l'utilise pour euh, soutenir son agenda politique au Moyen-Orient et pour étendre son influence sur le croissant chiite, les pays du croissant chiite, l'Irak, la Syrie, le Liban. Il l'utilise pour nourrir les tensions qui existent dans le Golfe. After all we have heard in, in this conference, one conclusion is, is clear. The appeasement policy applied to the relations between European Union and the totalitarian um, regime of the Iranian mullahs has not worked. It has been counterproductive and it is time to change it. We need a common European policy to deal with the Iranian threat based on firmness, diplomatic and economic pressure, a clear commitment to human rights and a strong support to the Iranian democratic opposition and in particular to the National Council of Resistance of Iran led by Mariam Rajavi. Thank you. Thank you.